Welcome back, everyone, to Love Thrill Series Week 7. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fear, whichever you prefer, and I'm joined by Google Frog, and we are into the Losers semifinals. It's going to be Penguin and Saber versus Legomino and Bakuatsu. And this is already starting out the Met Bands with Zed being gone. Hello? Yes, banning Zed. As you should. Okay, I shouldn't opine. But I'm not surprised they're banning Zed. That was... I mean, there was a couple matches that were played... I think none, none of these players played on those matches, but still, yeah, those were matches that were played and they were painful. Like, I don't think either players really... or I, I don't think Penal and Zebra are confident they're going to be able to push through a giant front like that. Yeah, Zed seems to be very much who can make the front without collapsing and then who can switch into some kind of escalation. And or a raid. Yes. All right, well, they could have up on a C map. Both the C maps we are could. on. Well, hey, okay, one of them is on. His key's on. Like... Oh, sorry, wait. What's up? He said we can Iski. I should be made his ban. Yeah, Iski's banned. As is Shimmer, so okay, no. Okay, so we're down to Vantage and Hourglass. Yep. Which, to me, are the two safe pick maps that I expect will be the ones that are most commonly played in this particular week. Hourglass it is. Okay. Okay. They just played a good game on Vantage. Although it was a long one. I guess a half-hour game, maybe you want to switch map and see if you can do something else. Yeah, that's understandable. I'm not sure how much Hourglass is going to help with that, seeing as it is a giant map, but then again, it's also a map where you can build up to endgame stuff fairly quickly, so... Yeah. I've noticed we haven't seen any tanks. I, I saw they... tanks last game. Oh, okay. I missed that. Yeah, that was... Tank and Spider against, I think it was Cloakie and Tank. Okay, well, here we have Tank once again, so yeah, nothing to be missed. I would expect Tank. Yeah, I was actually a bit surprised we didn't see Tank them. last map. Or last time we saw this map. Yeah, Mumble Clan had a plan. Yep. And God A likes others. That's fair. Well, it is Bleak an interesting Nick. 2v2 map, because you can drop a slower factory in the front by the look of things. Mm hmm Not what Bleatnik's planning on doing. The Cloakie bots are in the back and the hovers are in the front. Yeah. Cloakie bots are the faster bot factory, but I would maybe swap those around. Yeah, faster bot factory, but for a bot factory, I mean, you yeah. know, everything but Glaive is going to be completely outpaced by anything in the hovercraft factory. Because if you put it close up, you could get slings out that much faster. Exactly. If happens in the middle. Well, not just that. To happen. I mean, last time I saw this map played in 1v1, there was a lot of cloaky going through the center, like the center diagonal, primarily Night mm -hmm. Reaver. So it make a lot of sense to have that happen from nearby your opponent's base rather than trying to go from all the way across the map. But this is the setup. And it looks like it's going to be Bakuhatsu primarily doing the raiding and defense while Bleatnik goes and starts building up real fast. And that goes the other side too. It looks like Koda's the raider and we have a Mason coming in to expand in a pattern I did not expect. It's actually kind of risky. Going straight to the center of the map. Right out the front. Mm, Dagger's coming in to contest that but there will be a scalp... Or a Scorcher to help, and the Kodachi is in position, but clearly wants to go around the back and actually deal some damage to the base. So yeah, Scorcher gets it. Defends well enough. Though again, that is still a very forward position. So we might be seeing a north-south oh, split. Tricky. Like you were talking before, Possibly, Google Frog. But it, yeah. It's hard to... It's hard to imagine with these forward factories that being maintained. I That'd agree. Quite a, quite a fighty game. 
could have actually got scouted by that dagger. Yep, and there is a Lotus Left. already in position. So, Rip Coda. Lotus Commander, not really an option. It's wise enough to retreat. Same time, Dart Scorcher doing what Dart Scorcher does best. Killing everything it comes across because it slows it down. That's just something I kind of wish we saw more in Tank versus Rover, is Dart Scorcher's way to deal with Codas. I mean, it's the same cost, or it's slightly cheaper, yeah, but it completely wipes out Codas. You probably lose your dart though. Yeah, you lose the and dart, but you you keep the scorcher barely alive, and you kill the scor or you kill the coda. So for early raid defense, it's still a thing. Yeah. Well, for early raid defense, you can just put a scorcher in the way of wherever the coda wants to go. That's that's fair. Yeah. Now you can with the speed nerf, but I mean even like pre nerf coda. Yeah. It's about whether you can actually kill it or whether you can just stop it from doing anything all that useful. Mm-hmm. But again, it's 185, so you can really put a lot of metal into trying to kill it, and even if you lose a bunch of it, it still could be value. Looks like Saber might be switching into Blitz, which is a nice heavier raider. Bit yep. slow, though. A little bit, but honestly, I'm not surprised. With a Coda nerf, I expect a lot of people have decided to just go to Blitz as soon as they can, because that was how Tank was played before. Coda's got their weapons redesigned. So that's not yeah. surprising. Blitz has never been weak. It just wasn't quite as cost efficient as the old Coda. Yeah, they seem to both have a use at this point. Which is good. Yeah, that's Blitz, I mean that that'd be ideal Blitz, if that turns yeah. out to be the case. Still though, dagger over to the north side. We are getting. This isn't gonna amount to much more than scouting, unfortunately. Yeah, that Blitz really cleaned up. It really did. That was a great switch from Saber. From here, though, it looks like there might be a bit of problem for Penwin trying to hold on. I mean, there's definitely been a lot of bush over to the south. That is... That's looking like it's going to be really tough if Northeast wants to take the south side. And again, it's clear that they are trying to take the northwest instead. But, like you said, Google Frog, holding that's going to be tricky. Black Isis Commander is already in place. There's loads of daggers continuously being built up to deal with that. So it's not looking like a really safe idea to go for the north expansion for the north for the northeast side. It's approximately equal at the moment. I slightly prefer the map presence of Fleetnik. Yeah, like I said, I think I I I like I I agree. I think Bleednik's Backbots in particular is going to be making that difficult thing. I think that the south side for Bleednik, they have done a good job of holding on to what they have. And there's like there is a command here for Penwin, but there isn't much else in terms of support units, whereas on the northwest, there's loads of daggers that have to be contended with, along with Bakovatsu's commander. Northwest has more expansion, but I think it's pretty well, actually, unstable. Well, not only that, the south I don't know if it's that unstable, because southeast has got pretty big raid coming in here. Look like it's getting in getting in a regroup into another push. And that's there's a Ogre coming in on the top, which could put a stop to these uh, raider maneuvers around here. If they can support it well enough. If you just yeah. put an Ogre in and someone gets a thousand metal in raiders, then the Ogre will be killed. Well, Coda but Ogre, if you not. Use the it as worst a staging mix. point for the Blitz, then it can be really hard to dislodge. Yeah, but I don't see a whole lot of Blitzes around the map anyway. That being said, though, Penguin's commander might be able to defend itself? Yes, just barely enough. The, the Glaives don't want to die. With the Guardian hit points and the Lotus. Yeah, that's that, okay. That was definitely okay, scary, making, but... Something happened in the top left. The Commanders are meeting. Oh, and the Welder is getting threatened, but the Daggers have all gone down. The Ogre... Actually, the Ogre is in a really nice position here. Looks like they are going for the staging ground idea you were talking about, Google Frog. But at the same time, they're having to contend with being raided out in the front lines. That front door expansion I mentioned was unsafe at the start. Being torn to pieces by daggers. Remaining daggers coming in. Not able to get rid of blitzes because they don't have 13 of them. But Bladenick also wiping out the expansion. So while there has been some progress in pushing but back back on that suits, 
They are trading the south for it, but I think they're also kind of losing the northwest. That damaged command will have to run away into those two or tower it up quickly. Either way, the south has been lost to northeast. The north has kind of been taken. The commander might actually die. Uh, oh, yeah, Black Ratsu. Yeah, unupgraded against commander. Riot yeah. Commander with Ogre support. Yeah, there's no saving it. Bakwasu has unfortunately lost the commander. Yeah. They can do it fast enough. Might lose the ogre for it. No, nope, they decide not to. Pursue. Nope. Not with daggers. Don't have quite enough of them. So Saber and Penwin are actually surprisingly managing to get quite a bit out of this. They, I'd say they... Well, judging by the numbers, they won out on that trade. Just need some caretakers to start setting up the actual production, and then they'll be solid. Which, unfortunately, Bleednik already has. So while Bleedning has lost the numbers game in terms of metal, they're still winning on production. And attrition is the only thing really stopping them at the moment. Like, past they attrition. They got themselves at Geo, which is quite good. Oh, yes, they did. So that absolutely helps, but... Again... The production capacity is much higher for Bleednik than it is for the northeast side. If you look at the map presence overall, like... Northeast has no mobile units. They've lost everything but these Scorchers. That is the worry. Like, And they're looking to lose those too. Yeah, I mean, it's still the Ogre and some Blitzes, but compared to what Bleedning has, how mobile... How mobily Bleedning can raid out. Like, the Scorchers, however, are getting value. So while uh, that's kind of it, it's kind of working out. And behind that, they're able to start building up some Rippers as extra support, so... Yeah, this is actually this is a really well timed raid coming in here from Penwin. Honestly, it's yeah, kind of safe today. Be killed, but it will be costly. They really want to chase them down with Dagger, but you really don't want to chase Scorcher down. Oh, no. Decide against it. Yeah. I think it's going to be bad. This is going to be free. The southeast is just going down for nothing. North being held this reasonably okay. West, but... the tank army isn't nothing. No, it is. That's it actually... is a single ogre. But well, yep. Until a few blitz died, that was equal value. That's true. Army for any other one player. But they're a bit spread out. They weren't repaired. There were some damage blitzes uh, half a minute ago that needed a bit of repairing. Yeah, my Especially one concern. They're going to try and fight all these scaffold. Yeah, the one concern I would have is that the well, first off, Saber's commander doesn't really have a whole lot to deal with short range stuff. But also, more importantly, there's. Not. There's I'll a stinger. There's thought. some turrets. There are. This, that's true. This takes a while to deal with, at least. Or, if they really want to push all the scalpel into, they lose a few scalpel. At least if the blitzes react and take some damage. But there are really a lot of blitzes there. That's that was more my concern. There's not much built up over to the northwest. Well, now there's a cyclops coming in. True, but that's going to be a minute before it gets in the front lines. Yes. And also, I'm not sure if Cyclops is the best choice against a bunch of light units. Uh, it depends how they use it. Well... If, if you support the Cyclops with just enough to make it hard to kill, then you have an unapproachable army. But if you manage to get surrounded, that is a problem. Yeah. Well, when you're dealing with dagger scalpel, getting surrounded feels inevitable. Yeah. I think Cyclops makes Bleatnik um, focus their army to a degree that is not advantageous. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, so it would mean that the southeast becomes even more open. They have managed to rebuild it, but... Yeah, Bleatnik definitely suffering. Oh, right, the thing I was talking about was that Bleatnik is still maintaining a production advantage. Northeast is still accessing a 56 metal. They only have, like, 50, 60 metal now. Being used to their factories. Bleedning has been yeah. consistently producing the entire time. That is their main problem. Although there is a Lance coming in for Bleedning as well. Yep, as a result of that production I was talking about. Or extra production going into units. Like, I'm just curious I think what Sabre needs now Army is guys. just a few caretakers north to deal with the repairing tanks. Yeah. Also, if you look at the army value, Bleednik is actually slightly ahead. They have been consistently ahead despite the attrition disadvantage. 
So this is still not looking great for Northeast just because of the lack of caretakers. Now, Northeast has even this out now. But Leitnik is looking still. to kill that commander with the lands, I think. That would be a reasonable move. They might poke the Cyclops or take the Ogre. But I think they're going for the land for the commander at the moment. It is um, in shooting range. It is. Yeah, they're waiting. They didn't go for the Cyclops, so I absolutely agree. Same time, though, eastern side of the map, oh, defensers are either. ripping apart. No, they're ripping apart the Stardust. Uh, I want to see him send a cloaked ball of knights around the side. Put people completely out of position. Oh, uh, totally doable, too, <laughs> but no... Oh, there's no, there's no conjurer nearby. Not He's having trouble with the knights. They, they can't cross the distance without just being... Know, defeated in depth. Right. But their con nearby conjurer just... No, it's not really doing much. It's not really in position. So they can't get the area cloak field, and so they can't really do much with it. Much as they aren't doing that, though. And I mean... Into blitz. Oof. Yeah. Okay, two Cyclops with the blitz support. That could very well be a problem. So it's getting worrying. Yeah, Northeast is, are, is sorting out the production problems. Scalpel. I think Saber really needs those caretakers. Damage Cyclops, damage Commander. Blitz is like um, repairing. Yeah, oof. Cyclops getting hit hard by the daggers, though. Well, that's their job. The, the first that's true. 10,000 10, hit points, you just lose and you get value for it. The last little bit, which you don't want to lose. Now, it looks like they got the value for it. The blitzes are able to push forward, get some damage in. Lost a lot of blitzes, though. Lost a lot of blitzes. They did. No cloak pots. And it's more important. importantly, if you look, the there hasn't been a real distraction. Like Bleatnik is is being pretty conservative about how they move their forces to the left of the event. Like, they're not trying to take this completely or win it out. They're just trying to hold the line while maintaining attrition advantage on the eastern side of the map. Yeah. So that is smart That's my clubs now. Going forwards now would be foolish. Yeah, but at the same time, enough forces are here that actually is threatening the commander. Possibly the Cyclops as well. Nah. They're pretty slow. They, the commander can probably run away. Well, it's got one more penetrator, or one more lance shot before it actually loses that chance. <laughs> And the rest of the support blitzes are not helping. Yeah, it looks like... Yeah, one is sharing some cloak bots up the top left to sort of shore up the the anti-blitz. Yeah, without having to pay attention to it themselves. But I like this. The reclaim setup here... Well, would be reclaim setup if they hadn't set the move order on top of the hill, unfortunately. But that is a thing. Anyway, yeah, reclaim setup over here. Again, 6,000 metal reclaim for Bleednik. They have the caretakers to deal with it too, so it's it's gonna be kind of tricky. Like Bleatnik. Oh, some nice sneaky knights around the right. Ah, there they are. Probably not even cloaked, but nope. just sending them, send a knight or two around. Forces a response. It does. Though two ravagers is a pretty economical response. Oh, three ravagers. That's my. That make me much. Actually, the Two Ravagers cool. died, though. For the cost of a knight, that was definitely a win for Bleednik, but didn't manage to get much position. One Still, of the though. Cyclops is, is repaired. Yeah. Which means. Oh, crap. No! No, don't crash on me, game! Okay, it didn't crash on me. That was weird. Anyway. Get back to the game. Yeah, Cyclops is. are back. Oof, I'm not sure how this is gonna go. It looks like there's very much the advantage going over to Saber here. I mean, at the same time, there's a lot of pressure coming in from ba from Legomenon. So Penwin has a lot to contest with. Yeah, the Cloakbots have built up a mass in the middle. They've done it slowly, but it has been built up. Mm -hmm. Maybe Saber's looking to push a bit more. Well, if they get rid of the, the conjurers being built, they're building up, that's going to be very valuable. 
they can get a lot, and they're getting a lot out of that. Of course, the problem is that there is this push here. Penguin's commander under heavy threat. The Dami's trying to push this back. Penguin's commander should be able to survive regardless, though, just because of the amount of other support forces. Why is this locking up? What the heck? That looks like it inter Oh. Shit. You're just literally not receiving the commands to play the game. Sorry, my GPU fan is just not running as, far as, as high as it should be. That's the problem. Ah, okay. Yeah, it just keeps locking up and it's... Wait, what? what? Well, it looks like Saber's going into a final... Wondering what these Cyclopses can do. Can they make the space required? And it looks like they will be surrounded and killed. Though. No. Well, one of them is going to die. One of them is pretty much guaranteed dead. It just died, actually. So yes, absolutely guaranteed. Yeah, that was the final trying okay. to draw some heat off the middle. I don't know. If that's really working though. I mean, the middle is. Fencers are kind of helping, but the slings are essentially countering them. The knight's able to get in. Rippers are do not seem like the right unit to use here. No, against knight. No. Getting it's... stunned out. Getting stunned out, getting nailed by the slings as well, on top of the fact that the fences are just being torn apart. It feels like they want a ravager ball, or wanted a ravager ball there. Lots of open space, yeah. swing around and kill the slings. And at the same time, Commander... Sabres lost their commander, lost their Cyclopses. They've kind of lost everything over the western side of the map. So really looking quite iffy there for them. Uh, and if you look at the reclaim graph, Legimon's just been reclaiming on this side. That could be the difference. A slow push oh, in with Oh, yeah. 3,000 metal worth of reclaim. That is significant. Supported by reclaim. I mean, you gotta get that economic so advantage somehow. even there, but slowly got pushed in. Well, they were also taking a lot of the left side as well, which has now been fully claimed. I mean, now it's, it's going to be very difficult yes. to dislodge from Blutnik. So yeah, all the reclaim fields are basically entirely in Blutnik's control. Yeah, big 10k one on the left, 5k one. Well, there's a 5k one between the two sides. I don't know if you'd say it's in control when there's a bunch of Scorchers sitting in the middle. Mm -hmm. Just chilling without being killed. Yeah, I mean, it's... You do have to be able to kill a bunch of Scorchers in your reclaim field to really right. call it yours. That's true. That is a very fair uh, point yes. that I wasn't considering. Uh, some caretakers coming in to take this whole reclaim field. Actually, looking even very close to the base, most of the oh, 10k is actually very close to the Bleatnik bases with those two Cyclopses in the commander. Yep. Yeah, and the caretakers, caretaker with storage as well, because why not? I mean, they, yeah, they can't spend it in time. It's 100 metal per second. They're, or 50 metal per second, they're adding in from reclaim. Yeah, no wonder they went for the storages. Uh, Legimon adding on a aircraft factory, just going straight to Lico. Oh, uh, yep, there it is. Seems good at this point. I, I agree. Actually, that they've been using a few sparrows just to see what they're doing in their base. The, the northeast base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's which is quite nice. Yeah, that I am very glad to see that because I honestly think I I talk about sparrows a lot and I think they're underused and I'm glad to see them here because scouting is important, especially in two v two. It's a lot harder. Like one v one, I can kind of see experienced players yeah. knowing more or less how the game's going to go, but two v two, there's a lot more going on. So scouting is critical. Well, the thing about it is, once you've made, it's a bit like, you know early getting something early without getting the payoff later you're not investing if you build four sparrows you may as well have built an aircraft factory in an owl sure but if you build one wondering. sparrow just the one sparrow yes but if you build one sparrow and then lose it and build a second sparrow and then lose it oh, okay yeah fair enough yeah nail down a spooky road that's understandable i still think they're a bit underused but i'm glad to see them oh yeah Early, especially. So that's 
Bleatnik, they can play Hourglass. They absolutely can play Hourglass, and they have taken the loser semifinal spot. Now they can move on to the loser's finals because that's how tournaments work. So they're up against Golden and Crow, who are honestly We've just kind seen of how they play Hourglass. Yep, we have indeed. And that was... They played it... That could be reason enough to avoid ending up on that map again. But they did look pretty happy there. I think I think Bakabatsu and Legomenon can deal with Hourglass, even against Golden Crow. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Are any of these best of three? The Grand Finals are. Okay. So not this, not this match, yeah. but the following one. All right, so we are. So might as well make it the Yeah, all right. I was waiting for Crow then. So I gotta be honest, I'm not entirely sure who I expect to win this. Like, Golden Crow got knocked out by Anir and Asayane. The Gaman and Bakahatsu have been doing remarkably well. I mean, I feel like if they win, Anir and Asayane are definitely favorite, but then if Golden Crow win, it'd be an interesting rematch. thinking about well i think we're just waiting on wait this is the wrong maybe this is the wrong game they it is the wrong game own. they they made their own that's exactly what happened okay makes sense oops well anyway all right well we just need to hopefully get the map maybe they going. decided on hourglass already Oh no. Okay. It no. just okay. randomly went into Hourglass. Cool. So we can actually get this going and watch the thing. Alright, so losers finals. Golden Crow versus Legoman and Bakahatsu. And whoever wins that has to see if they can beat a near Asana. Unless they decide what I have to play on. I'm not sure how much we're waiting for here.
Okay, so we are down Hourglass and Shimmer. We're not going to get Hourglass this time around. Oops. Nor are we going to get Shimmer Shore. So, surprisingly, Lonely Ways is not the first to be banned, nor Isky Channel. Okay, Isky Channel is out. Maybe they know that no one wants to play Lonely Ways by now. That's true. Yeah. Like, so might as well just... Ban on it. No real point. Although... I think we're going to be on Vantage. Map. I think we're going to be on Vantage. Maybe. I mean, if someone bans Vantage, I'll be really surprised. Although, to be fair, we're getting Firebreak possibly as a thing, and although it'll be Crow and Golda being able to choose which one they want, they probably won't choose Firebreak. But Legomenon does have the next choice. They might pick Vantage just to... Nope, ban Lonely Oasis. Okay, we're on Vantage. Oh wait, Zed's still up. My bad. That's that's still a thing. Isn't that Firebreak? Zed, Firebreak, and Vantage are still up. Yes. I didn't. I forgot Zed. That's how much I like the map. Okay. You might want to play Zed if you think you have a two factory combo that will push through anything. That's true. Yeah, and you have the mental energy to actually spend all the time pushing and trying to push through. That's definitely a tricky part. Okay. So now, do they want to play? Do they want to play Vantage? That's a good they question. Just want to back to get the choice of Vantage or Zed. Yep. Well, it is up to them. They just played a half-hour game on Vantage. Yeah, they might go for Zed. Well, any... Now I gotta think, I guess. It's like, do we want to deal with having to just have the super mobile play, or do we want to go for a single front line? Hmm. Playing against air on Vantage could be pretty annoying. Well, they're gonna find they're out. Really because of the three fronts. <laughs> Yeah, no, that I totally agree, but they're going to find out. The one thing I suppose that works for them, though, is that it's three fronts on both sides, so assaulting the air factory from a sneaky vantage point might actually work out. So they could be able to figure the base, the base in 2v2 is forced to be you know, one spot, right? Yep. So it, it's hard to attack a 2v2 base if both of the players start in the same spot. Very true. Well, that's how we're going to be, that's what we're expecting now, is that double base, which but I guess some vantage point does, or vantage does, yeah, you don't, you do have just the one tiny start location. So probably are going to see exactly that. Well, Rovers from Bakahatsu, no surprise there. I'm more curious, what is Crow going to go for? Other than proposing a sneaky push over the north. This is the kind of map you see spiders on in 2v2, I think. Having seen spiders a few times for now. Hmm. That's a that's a Just thought. It's got it's got the mid game plan of put a crab somewhere. Right. Yeah. Against rover tank, that might actually work really well. <laughs> so yeah, given that, I think. Well, well like, I'm not going to see not that. But... The rest of mid game plans either. It isn't, but I'm just thinking like, it might have a hard time to slot. Well, I guess it's. It has the Cyclops, so it could dislodge the crab, but still, tank sometimes struggles with things on spires. What in the world are Crow and Gilda going for? Okay, well, Crow and Gilda are clearly going for a massive flank play. Whatever it is they're playing. Hey. Wee. 
I have to decide soon. Yeah, I know. There's like 35. And it's something weird. It's always like 35 seconds, 32 seconds. It's not just multiples of 10. I think it decrements by 10 or 20. And then it also says 20. And when it's to be started in 20 seconds. Oh, okay. From whatever race condition in the um, server causes it. Okay, so spider and tank. Okay, so you had you had the right thought on the spiders. But I going this is over. what um, Bleednik played last time. Played into or played as? Played as. Well, played as, but it can go many different ways. Right. Well, starting out with double raider. Okay, not even just relying on the commanders entirely for the economy. On the other hand, the western side, early weaver, some codas, but that's a, and then some fleas. But otherwise, look like western side's playing for the late game, or Bleatnik looks just want to take the game as soon as possible. Yeah, although maybe they'll rethink that when they see spiders. So far, no indication spiders, of that. You might want to expand a bit more and. Um, Expand a bit, because the spiders can hold sort of a strong central point. And yeah. Expand around them. Good thinking, and I don't know if that's going to happen though. It's there's a shift over to fencers. I mean, fencers were already kind of on the menu. It's not really a big change. It doesn't look like Bleatning has a great set of units to actually, or great position to push from them. They have a good set of units for it, but they don't have the units aren't really grouped up in a way that's actually going to allow them to do any real rush. Unless these two codes in the north find some kind of mileage. Well, a commander in three fences, that can be a rush. One of the fences is already halfway across the map. Oh yeah, the commander is going forward, you're right. Both the commanders are just walking right to the middle, ignoring three metal extractors to do so. Yeah, and again, we see, we aren't seeing like anything. This is take an early position. I don't even know about early position. It looks almost like they just want to take, like, just push and win quickly. Godot's commander's all the way down south, and it's only a recon commander anyway. Yeah, Crow's commander is also an economy commander or support commander, whatever it's. Engineer commander. So they've got level three commanders. Oh, Morphe up to level four. On Legimon. Yeah, so Bakuatsu has got Rocket Launcher, Gonon's got Riot Cannon. What they really need to do. Spread. Once the commanders get here, they can keep the Stinger down by the time the commanders get here and then they just walk the commanders in. Yeah, that, that's. Oh, it's kind of a tight timing. Oh, Stinger's completing, they're really boosting it out. Yeah, as they could. really should. It looks like that is going to be done in time to stop the commanders. Ogre up as well for extra support. Ogre is worth a lot. Oh, that might actually be able to push them back. That is totally going to push them back. Oh, that ogre saving the day. MVP unit right there. Legomenon's commander is looking like it could uh, very... It's, it's going to okay. die. Legomenon's commander is just... Okay. It's, okay, the coda does save Legimod's it. Legomenon's command, Bakuasu's commander moved away quite far. That was scarily five. They were together ish. I had that. Yeah, well. So they've got this position. Now, what do they do with it? Another ogre's coming in, so they're going to have to do something pretty quickly. Yeah, the fencers will help, though. But three fencers and won't be enough. West has so much more metal just expanding with that commander south. It's nothing that the Kodatis couldn't solve. I don't think they're aware of it, though. I mean, if you look at the radar coverage... No, it's nowhere well, near. They have no idea. They could solve the lack of awareness as well. Yeah, they could do that, but that would involve doing They've things other than... Command is bitting. That's true. That's strictly true, considering yeah. the defense. Although the CODAs yeah, are going down south. They out. are... Okay, and uh, then CODAs have taken some of it. The CODAs can take out two more extractors. Yeah, but these what two. what will they do now? Well, Walk main base extractors. Four. Well, certainly pushing west back. I mean, despite the early advantage, west 
They're way behind in attrition. Their economy is actually about on par. And most of the resources for Bleednik are being spent on repair, but... Hell, I mean, they're getting reclaim. Okay, Lagama and Bakabatsu playing it super risky. I do not agree with this. Oh, yeah, wait. Oh, never mind. Actually, I kind of do agree with it then. Taking out two ogres, that's pretty good. That is very good. I... I kind of underestimated that, and at the same time, Kodas over to the bottom are getting rid of basically the remaining metal extractors they can. And now they're actually building some artillery. Badger coming in, crossing the map slowly. They have no constructors at base. Nope. Just so the two commanders. Sneaky, sneaky fleas around could at least force a response. Oh, what's this commander doing? I don't know. Legomino's commanders, they've been getting really... Risky on that car on the cluster bomb, but there are... there's a Oof. widow coming in. If the widow stuns the weak command, stuns the strong commander, things coming to kill the weak commander. That could happen. Yeah, well, they might want to get near the caretaker. Like the Gaunas oh, commander making, making a stinger. Oh, there they go. They queue a stinger. Uh, is it gonna be in time though? I'm not confident. Morphing. Fleas are coming in. Morphing something, maybe range. I think they have to give up on the idea of killing this stinger with a commander, based on how support it has. Yeah, that, that's. Well, I mean, the badger's already coming in, so clearly they they have rethought that idea. He's morphing something though. What would he be morphing? Uh, let's see. He's just morphing health. Oh, but now, oh, that that commander's dead now. Yep, it, there's the yep, venom. Or the venom, the widow. There's the widow. All there's the ogre. Oh, the governor's commander's not going to last 20 seconds. Nope, it's not going to last for two. They go down. Bakwas's commander's going to maybe survive, but Goda's commander has right taken the entire time. Yep, taken the entire time just to go around the other side, pushing Bakwas's commander back. Uh, I, I, that might just jump. be... Oh, oh, Goda's commander. Yeah, they're they're good. Yep, there's there's the widow. Yeah, there's... She got decloaked, but... Yeah, so... vehicles can't go up there, so, yeah. But yeah, Bakwas's commander forced to retreat. Yeah, just There's nothing too, there. Too greedy to go in for the turret, losing all their health. They needed that health. I mean, the one thing that's working for them is that Bleatnik isn't really far behind in terms of economy. The Widow but is dumb. going to hit them down. Yep. yep, there it goes. Yeah, that that is it. I think if Bleatnik had realized that they needed to pivot into... Ah, there we go. I think if Bleatnik had realized they needed to pivot into a more aggressive sorry a more economic setup that would have been fine yeah but as it was yeah no sting didn't is, have that sting is still good by the look of it yep but it was so close to their base that they couldn't really make a sting in return that just gives uh west time to build their own you know good right. necessary they're so close to the base maybe they should have even made an impaler if they really wanted to continue that yeah, that would have... I, I'm kind of surprised they didn't go for the Impaler. Or they went for the Badger instead. But still, the threat of Widow is pretty high as well. Yeah. Well, anyway, that was that. So we're going to be moving on to the Grand Finals after a short break. Which will be Gota and Crow against Anir and Asainane. So we are... Gonna be on that in just a few minutes, so stay tuned. <laughs> 